Welcome to the iWay 8 tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do an overview of the iWay integration tools environment. This is the Eclipse environment allowing for development within the framework. The iWay integration tools development environment is an Eclipse based environment. This means that in addition to all the capabilities that Information Builders brings to the platform, you can also install additional components or third-party products to be able to make your development environment more user-friendly for you. In order to access the iWay components, you come to the Perspectives. Perspectives are a way for Eclipse to create different styles and different views of work environments customized specifically to the application or intent at hand. In this case, you come up here to the upper right-hand corner and click on the Perspectives bar. From that option, you get to see all the different perspectives that may be installed. And here we can see the iWay integrator, which is currently what we are highlighted on. If something was to change, if you were to accidentally close one of the windows on your view, you could always reset the perspective by coming here and picking it again, or by coming to the upper right hand side where it says iWay integrator. Right click and click reset the environment. Within the perspective itself, there are a few different windows available. First, we have the Application Explorer. The Application Explorer is going to be where we actually develop our individual projects. This is the typical folder type view where you'll have different artifacts, components, files that are going to be accessible. We'll see that shortly. In addition to the Application Explorer, you also have the iWay Explorer, which is a way of interacting with deployed servers as well as Library Manager a way of publishing reusable components so that when it's developed once, it can be utilized over and over again. The majority of the screen is the canvas, which will become useful once we start developing our individual projects. Now, in order for us to do that, we come over here to the Application Explorer and we create a project. In this case, I'm gonna right click, Create New, and here you can see I have a number of different options available to me because I'm in the iWay perspective. I can create an application project, which is what we're going to choose to do, but I also have the capability to create channels, create flows, which we'll do shortly, create APIs for API management, or create transforms to change one document type to another. Anything else I might want to do that's not listed here is available through the other section. If I click on application project, I have to give it a project name, and in this case, we'll just name it tutorial. I'm going to use the default project and hit Finish. As you can see, the project has now been generated on the Application Explorer tab. Within the directory itself, I have a number of different folders where I can store specific types of artifacts. We'll be addressing these as the tutorials progress. For now, what we're going to do is create a simple flow that takes a document and moves it. In this case, we'll move it in memory but still we'll be able to see actually how we can start to build out a piece of logic. What I'll do is come here and click on Flows, right click, New, and I'm going to choose to create a new flow. A flow is a graphical way of representing the information as it flows through our system. As you'll see, it's graphical. We can configure different checks, different decision points, and different interactions with third-party applications, APIs, what have you. For this case, we'll just call it Tutorial Flow and click Finish. As you can see here, we have a start and we have an end. In this case, there's no additional logic between the two. If I wanted to be able to enhance this and create different decision points, I have the capability to come over here to our palette and find individual components that I want to drop into the canvas. For example, Perhaps I'm going to have a decision point where I'm looking at an incoming document, determining the source of the document, and that's going to determine what the target has to eventually be. In which case I can create a condition or I can perhaps take two different documents coming from two different systems and join them together into a single document and then pass that consolidated document onto an endpoint. In future tutorials, we'll utilize some of these different steps to build out some more advanced logic. In addition to flow control, there's also the capability to talk to various APIs, such as email, RESTful services, FTP services, or TCP IP. We also have the capability to talk to different types of applications. All of your typical CRM systems, systems like Salesforce, Siebel, etc. 
and we have generic technology adapters. In order to talk to a standard RDBMS, you can simply use the RDBMS adapter. Alternatively, you might have pieces of Java or .NET logic that you've already built that you want to be able to make sure can be dragged and dropped into the canvas, making it easier to use going forward and being able to be pulled into new types of logic and larger types of macro services, in which case we have documented process on how to put wrappers around them, so they'll show up right here in this list. We can also call business intelligence applications, or as data is coming through the process, we can choose various data quality services that we may want to put into the process to ensure that when data gets to its target system or target application, it's been validated, potentially corrected, and if there are problems that can't be remediated, perhaps we have some exception handling that we want to process. In any case, what we'll do now is just try running this flow very basically. To do that, we come up here and we can click Run Tutorial. If I click on that button here, you can see my environmental configurations. We'll leave this for later investigation. One thing we need to do, though, is we need to determine where it's going to run. So I'm going to type in the default iway iway as the user ID and password, and I'm going to use an existing server. This is pre-configured when you first install the application. In this case, I'm going to test it against my base configuration, which we'll cover in a more detailed architecture presentation, and I'm going to hit Apply. Now when I hit run, what immediately happens is that logic, which is very simple at this point, got executed. The sample was shown earlier in the dashboard before I clicked run. If I want to see that document again here, I can just click on start and we can see this is what it passed in. Test data. Now if I want to see what happened to the end, of course it's the exact same document. There's been no change to the document. We haven't added any transformations. We'll do that in the next video. Some additional information that's available to us as we do these tests are all of the registers as well as properties. Registers are the variables that exist during the time of execution. Here you can see a complete list, everything from the server. If we utilized a different password as registers to different systems so they were dynamic, it would be available as well. Also properties around the actual files are also available as you can see here.